Hey guys, what's up? By Sectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with the next video, and this is the first in a new series that's going in depth into base building. I've never actually gone um, this far with base building videos before. I have guests on, we're breaking down bases, looking at replays, because base building has changed, the meta has changed. Um, we're gonna be talking about Town Hall 12 in this video, but we're also um, gonna have videos on Town Hall 11, 10, and maybe even nine, so. Whatever town hall you are, you will have a video to help you with base building. This is going to be a long video, but it's very in-depth. I hope you guys stick around for it. Uh, let me introduce my two guests for this video. First, we have Pekasis, a town hall 12 in Genesis, um, one of the top base builders. Thanks for coming on, Pekasis. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Now, I want to give you uh, give your channel a shout out. You have your own YouTube channel called Lando Gaming. I will link it in the description and the comments section. So be sure to check it out. Um, can you just take a minute to tell us what you post on that channel? Yeah, um, mostly right now I'm just doing uh, attack strategies and showing how and why I hit them. I break down bases and explain my ideas on what's most successful and what isn't. And then I just released three videos of defenses. So, Yeah, a very valuable resource, guys, if you want to get more in-depth with, with base building beyond this video even, um, especially Town Hall 12. That's where Pegasus specializes. And you guys will see as we get into it, um, we're focusing on one of his bases from week one in CWL that held up very, very nicely. So he definitely um, is a, a very well... Uh, a, a good base builder is what I'm trying to say. Um, so thanks for coming on, Pekasis. We also have Dub, a Town Hall 12, among other Town Halls, uh, in One Hive Genesis as well. Dub, thanks for coming on. You helped uh, test this base, is that right? Yes, yes, I did. So Dub can provide some uh, some insights into kind of how this base was developed uh, as well as Pekasis, this was his actual base. So here's the deal, guys. We got Twidla. All three of us are going to be drawn on it. We'll spend some time at the beginning just talking about Town Hall 12 in general and uh, the types of things you want to focus on, what you're defending against, stuff like that. Then we'll switch gears and look at some replays on this base that kind of show what we're talking about uh, happening in actual attacks. Um, Last thing I want to say before we get into it, a big shout out to all my patrons on Patreon. It's a platform where you can support the channel financially and you get your own custom war base sent to you each month at a certain tier. So if you're interested in that or if you just want to support the channel in general, be sure to check that out. Link is also in the description. Um, that all being said, let me start Pekasis by asking you, generally speaking, at Town Hall 12, what are you trying to do um, in these types of CWL wars and even not quite that competitive, just uh, wars that have 10s, 11s, and 12s? Are you trying to defend yeah. two stars, three stars, and what's the overall objective? Uh, for the most part, being in a mixed town hall war environment, I'm trying to defend two things. One, a town hall 10 scout and or two star, and the tw town hall 12 three star. So the Town Hall 10, uh, they're, they're going to be hitting you first to try to either scout the base or secure a two-star, which is yeah. the next best thing, of course, to a three-star in war. Um, but ultimately, the, would you say a three-star is more important because we're seeing Town Hall 12s getting tripled um, in great numbers in at least CWL invite? Yeah, of course, of course. I do think it's important to defend the two star because you're forcing them to use more hits and most clans ideally don't want to have to two star you with a 12. They only do that as a last resort. Right. And if you guys, if you watch the stream, um, it's uploaded as a video of last war, you'll see they were in an awkward situation in uh, CWL in week one because Pekasis was not able to be two starred by any of the tens forcing them to go for a, a two-star attempt at the end with the 12 rather than being able to try to three-star it fully. So that's an important thing to mention. Um, okay, so you know, you're defending two stars, but also three stars from 12s. That all in mind, what's the general layout of the base? We have important buildings 
like the town hall, of course, which has that uh, Giga Tesla in it and the explosion at the end. We got the Eagle, we got Infernos, we got the Queen, all these valuable things. How do you like to position them uh, in, in your town hall 12 bases? So any design that I do, I start with the three most important parts of a base, which to me are the town hall, the Eagle and the Queen. And I try to keep them as far away from each other as possible. So I don't allow too much value to any one part of my base. Right. Um, and you'll notice, guys, if you look at this base, you have dead space here kind of separating the town hall. You have kind of a, a very difficult compartment here to keep stuff inside of because it opens up to the outside with some storages and stuff. And th this is working to separate those important uh points that Pegasus talked about. Also with the wall wrecker, if you're pushing to the town hall, now you got this dead space. The wall wrecker can't go any farther. It's going to be very difficult uh, to get past there if you come directly at the town hall with the kill squad. Yeah, what those negative spaces do is they force you to do one of two things. You're either going to use a jump to get into this compartment or this compartment. Right. But even if you do getting the queen, that's a long road to go. Mm -hmm. Right. But also, if you don't use a jump, right, you're going to aggro on one of these buildings over here. And what happens half of the time, the troops will be in here doing their work and then they bounce outside and go shopping around the base. Yeah. And obviously not going to be uh, much value there. Um, so, Dub, let me bring you into this. Uh, as a Town Hall 12, what are the main attacks you're trying to defend against, would you say? Um, you want to try to prevent spam. You want to try to create some sort of surgical or, as some people call them, more skilled attacks where you have to incorporate multiple layers of the attack where it can be a kill squad into something else. And so the number one thing that you probably try to prevent is bowie mass dragons or electro dragons and spam lava and loons right and that that's a great point you made and i i tell it to people at any town hall level you know if, if they ask okay what is the main thing i should be doing with the base and i say if you do anything especially town hall 10 defend frozen witches defend the stuff that people are using without even thinking that much about it make them have to do a well thought out attack so yeah, you talked about uh, spam la loon, um, stuff like that, which can crush a base um, with a lot of room for error if you don't set up intentionally to defend it. Um, so Pegasus, talk about um, la loon, uh, electro dragons as well, maybe those popular Town Hall 12 strategies. What elements of the base do you have uh, set up to defend against that to counter it? So I'll talk about electro dragons first. Um, normally I'll have the clan castle in the dead center of the base and unlurable. But in this case, I wanted it lurable and under certain conditions. So if you're going to send a naked king and queen down this direction, right, to presumably get this air defense and cut a funnel for your balloons or E-drags, the queen is going to aggro on this. And that's going to actually lure out the hound. And I'm going to run a hound baby for this base in particular. So once the hound is out, say E drags, it's going to take them forever to get through that that um, lava hound. And then even when it pops, it's going to drive them crazy with pups. And what you really need is them to get hung up. Uh, same thing with balloons. Because of where the queen pulls the hound from, she ends up taking too much fire going up this direction to actually uh, survive to kill all the pups from the hound. Mm -hmm. So now you have pups to deal with with your spam loon. Right. So on the Electro Dragon attacks, you're having people trying to maybe grab at least one or two air defenses and also set that mm -hmm. funnel to push the dragons through kind of the more denser regions of your base. So um, yeah. that's a, a good point. You have that trap where the CC is going to lure out um, most mm -hmm. likely right here. So you're trying to kind of mess up the uh, the funnel and the uh, getting those air defenses there. What would, yeah. you, what would you say about, um, well, first, do you have anything else for Electro Dragons uh, in this base? Yeah, for me, with the Electro Dragon defense, one, I have all the Black Sams out here, right? And that's dual purpose, but I'll talk about why I use it for 
B drags. Um, with all the air defenses up here, they're likely going to kill squad this top section somewhere, and then E drag from any other point around this uh, this half of the base. So I made sure all the SAMs are there so that it, it really hurts them when they come in. And then the other thing, and the most important thing for Electro Dragons, is the building spacing and placement. Now this looks like th this is great pathing for E-Drags, but it's not. If you really look, you have two storages here surrounded by very low hit point buildings everywhere else. So when they start, they'll start taking down everything but those storages. And what ends up happening is you'll have two packs of Electro Dragons. One pack is going to come this way into those Black Sams. The other pack is going to come this direction into the Queen. And the strength of E-Drags is really when they're in packs under Rage and they can one-shot buildings. Once you thin them out a little bit, it gives your base the time to weed them out or hold them off long enough that the, the clock runs out and they don't get the three-star. Right, that's a good point. And I like the the SAMs along the outside, they're going to take out these uh, maybe perimeter E-Dragons that might otherwise be pushing everything into the base. Now you're going to have big groups wandering to the outside where there's less value. Um, so that's a great uh, thing in the base. And also, like you said, having these, uh, these storages here, they're going to be the last thing up if they come from this side, which they most likely will, looking at the base. Um, so you're going to get a split, just trying to thin out those dragons, prevent that big bunch of dragons right in the middle of the base that we see being the, uh, the linchpin, so to speak, of the electro dragon attack strategy. Um, right. And then about La Loon, um, how does this base at the same time counter the popular suicide hero La Loon, kill squad Lalo, stuff like that? Well, I try to bait things that I want people to do. So like I talked about with the naked hero walk here, I also, this whole top side is just begging to be hit with any kind of kill squad. And with the sweepers pointed in that direction as well, it would be almost ridiculous to come in this way with a kill squad because your balloons will never take this and the town hall down, right? With those sweepers, the position that they're in. Right. And even if they do, good luck getting the rest of this, right? So with that in mind, I know they're going to come in and kill squad something up here. So again, with the air defenses way out here like this, I really maximize the value of all these red balloons, right? Because when the hounds pop, it's not going to set these red balloons off. This one actually is in range and it does get set off, but the rest of them won't. Mm -hmm. And they're very valuable. And I put them in the core for balloons on purpose because that's where the balloons are all going to group up in those big packs of seven, eight, nine. And you really want them catching red bombs then, at least in my builds. Right. And I mean, you can bring a heal, but we're talking, this is a tough spot. This is a tough spot. You just got so many yeah. different places that are going to be tough for balloons to get through. And um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it's not a matter of one heal spell. You're going to be forcing a lot of healing. And also, I want to point out, you have these expos that... You know, maybe this one catches the range of this air defense, but you also have expos, not just wizard towers, that are going to be not tanked by lava hounds up here, making it very difficult. And um, it's a trade-off at Town Hall 12, like I say. You put the air defenses offset, it's good against La Loon, it might open up electro dragon attacks, but you also talked about how it's difficult to get value here with a kill squad and then do the e-dragon attack that many people might try looking at a base like this. Um, yeah. Now, Dub, you you guys were uh, testing this base. Can you talk a little bit about some of the air testing that went on and how the base responded to it? Uh, an interesting part to the air testing is that usually, in a sense, it's because of the sweeper position and pointing out towards the air defense, you need to really consider how many hounds you're bringing and where they're coming in from because Ideally, you're trying to pull as many air traps as possible to eliminate any sort of issues when you get to the core of the base. And so what Pegasus did really well is as soon as we started, I believe that was the first testing that we did, was mass Lalo. And so what we did is changing the outside by putting this over here and this over here. These are not ideal places for hounds, mainly because if anything, you're tanking 
two, maybe three defenses at once, and you avoid the entire core. And so you can't leave up any type of traps that can go ahead and ruin the Lalo in the middle because, as you pointed out earlier, you can't put two or three heels in the middle of the base because the balloons are too slow. It would take forever. You would just lose everything. Mm -hmm. And so that was our probably one of the very first adjustments that we went ahead and made. And then we started looking at uh, sort of branching out further into queen walks and seeing if there's some sort of high value that we can force the queen in and then Lalo the rest of the base. Right, yeah. right. So um, this base is obviously somewhat unique in that you got these air defenses offset. You also got the town hall that's away from this, I would call it like an anti-air zone right here. I mean, you got four of your wizard towers, multi-inferno, expos, tesla farm. That's obviously where you're really putting your, your punch um, against air troops. But then you have select things that aren't in that area. The town hall not being there, what's the purpose of that? Well, really, that's about forcing them to use the Warden's Tome away from all of the, the other defenses on this side, right? Because without the Warden's Tome, you're probably not getting the town hall down. Now, if you're going to do that without the Warden, that means you're investing your wall wrecker and your heroes. Mm -hmm. And that to me is enough. If I can get you to spend that much value of your attack here, then the likelihood of you taking down the rest of this is a lot lower. And that's where I think we see people at Town Hall 12 uh, putting their Town Hall in relatively low DPS areas because you're forcing a, a Grand Warden ability in most types of attacks here which means you're taking it away from any, you know, big wall wrecker push or any type of mass laloon or electro dragon coming through here. Um, so it's, it's making it difficult by splitting that up. Um, so I, I think that's pretty uh, good for air attacks. We have laloon and electro dragons you're trying to defend mainly. Um, now we're going to switch gears and talk a little bit about some of the ground attacks you might face. So for ground attacks at Town Hall 12, um, I'll let either one of you answer this, but what, what are the main things you're trying to defend? Um, would it be miners, hogs, stuff like that? Miners. What about you, Dub? I think you want to try to think of them both as the same because they both move similar, except mm -hmm. for miners, obviously they're hitting every single building, but in reality, as far as the giant bombs go, the whole goal is to get them to hit as many of them as possible. And so really the giant bomb placement is supposed to be in the area where you see the majority of whether it's hogs or miners coming in at. Right. And you're, you're healing both hogs and miners. Um, so you're, you're trying to kind of force those heals in awkward locations in both. And also the spring traps work well against both a little harder for miners, obviously. Um, so looking at this base, Pegasus, um, talk a little bit about maybe the minor pathing uh, and how you set up to defend against miners, and also how that might affect hogs as well. So with miners, the first thing was I had all the bombs as far away from the um, splash damage as I could. You really can't keep them away from splash damage entirely, but the goal is to force heals away from wizard towers if I can, and if they don't, the bombs really hurt them, right? Mm -hmm. And then when we're looking at the pathing, right, like I said, I want the kill squad to come in here. That's what I'm baiting, which means you're going to come in miners somewhere this way or somewhere this way. And if we look at both sides of the base, at the top of here you have um, a Tesla farm, a giant bomb, a whole bunch of splash damage up here. This is really hard to push through. Right. And then if you come down here, this pathing is likely going to lead you in that direction, right? Because of this negative space right here. At least that's the goal. So, um, okay. As well as the town hall, a lot of people will come in, like Dub can speak to this. His goal was to come in here in this direction, right? And come in miners this way. 
that's why I added these two skeleton traps here was to help hang those miners up as long as I possibly could. So how did but, the, uh, the miner testing go there, Dub, with this base? Um, good for me, bad for Pegasus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was very frustrating. <laughs> uh, I think it came to a certain point that uh, Pegasus and I have not been in the same clan for very long. And so we think of bases very differently. And so I started to learn miners right when I started to play Town Hall 12. So as soon as I moved up, um, it was something I did a, for a long time prior to at Town Hall 11. And so when I look at a base, it's more about what type of pathing you can create, not necessarily value. And so one of the very first adjustments that Pegasus made was, as he said, when I'm coming in in this direction over here, the main goal is one so that I can get the CC because it pulls at a certain range. I believe it was like right around here. And so yeah. the one negative is, is, of course, you have to deal with the sweeper. But if you look around, there's not very much point defense and it's not a very difficult funnel. Mm -hmm. And so the the next thing that we he originally had was this wall piece here was sitting one tile space closer. And so what that did here is if by counting tiles, you have your three tiles and she's shooting over to the fourth tile that opens up all of these buildings. It also makes the queen kind of step a little bit over. Well, we didn't get yep. the queen. It, it makes her stand more in this area versus sitting back waiting for whatever else is coming. And so essentially it took, um, I feel like I got it on the first try. And so then when we changed this wall, we also changed the CC. And so yeah. really it came to the point of, I needed to have a creative way to break into this compartment as well as creating a nice funnel for the miners. And so really I came with the wall wrecker in this position. I used the BK over in this position once the CC starts to come out. And then at this point in time, uh, I've come to realize that miners are very good when you can keep them in the confined spaces and so you can now look at them similar to the way you look at lalo you want to kind of cut out a certain portion of the base and that's essentially what i did and so with this line here this is the part that i didn't want the miners to look into and so now you're looking at this little compartment really where the town hall is and this is where my miners are going in so they're all tight they're all compact Mm -hmm. My heel becomes perfect. I'm hitting every single miner. And so the town hall, as Pegasus changed later with these skeleton traps, the goal really with the skellies is that you want them to be on the backside of the town hall so that they hit the town hall, then it goes off and they, they turn to the skeleton traps, which essentially I think you lose usually around eight. Sometimes it can be 12 miners as it's shooting four at a time. Right. And I think... That's um, what you've been talking about is a, a good point for miners is that um, what I've noticed is you want to keep them somewhat spread out so you're not going defense to defense like zigzagging because it just takes too long or taking too much damage. At the same time, you're balancing that with not wanting them to just go outside the base in every which way. So you want to keep it controlled but spread out to some extent so they move a little quicker. You don't want all 30 miners in one group. And um, defensively, you have the skeleton traps that um, hold them up, that pull them together. The queen pulls them together. These can really mess up the, uh, the nice even spread that attackers might want to do coming that way or also having a, a group coming like this. So um, that's something to look for in minor attacks. Now for hogs, is it similar? What, what would you say is the, uh, the deal with hogs in this base? Um, I turned down hogs immediately on this base, mainly because of the fact that we pointed out earlier. With the multiple layers of healing, if you pull a, a giant bomb before you really want to, it forces you to have, at that point, is a delayed heal. And so it comes at a place that you may not necessarily be wanting. And so, for instance, if we're looking at the base the same way, with hogs, you cannot have the town hall up. Um, it's almost like uh, your entire rest of the raid would have to be perfection, and then you would have to have the tome 
for the town hall because mm-hmm. at the same time they'll they'll target the town hall when it's engaged but if they walk past it you'd have to go all the way back for it which in reality there's no way you're getting through a whole base without tome and then leaving the town hall as the last defense and so really you're looking at this half of the base over here and so when you see this over here the first thing you notice is, is the tesla farm up at the top the giant bomb forces the heel here which means now you have to, you've got this awkward sort of heal because are you going to try to heal everything in between the second circle? Are you trying to double heal both sides? It comes to the point where this whole middle section here can't be healed by one. And so if you've pulled the giant bomb on the outside, you're kind of stuck. And so in reality, I, I kind of ruled out hogs fairly quickly, mainly because you have to have the queen down. You have to have some way to handle the town hall and at that point you can't do them both really in this raid without some sort of very powerful kill squad and you still may fall short mm-hmm. w- would you add anything to that uh pegasus for hogs or miners yeah um with the hogs just the sheer amount of point defenses you face on the back half oops <laughs> on this Oops, there we go. On this back half here, all of the point defenses are back here, minus six, right? Maybe seven. It's mm-hmm. just, it's so much. Even under heal, through, say, this uh, Tesla farm, you're losing hogs left and right, plus all the spring traps are back here, minus these two for the kill squad. It's just, it's overwhelming, and the hogs, um, it's just too much for them, even under heal. Yeah, I'd agree. Um, so to kind of bring this together for the viewers, one thing I've, I've noticed as we've talked is an important part of this base for air or ground attacks is you have these important things, air defenses, town hall, inferno, very separate um, from the rest of the base. It's kind of divided along this line. So you're putting these things over here that can't be ignored. Um, and you're going to force a kill squad likely wherever the town hall is because of that explosion it does at the end. And by keeping that over there, but having most of the actual like DPS, difficult areas, traps, all that over here, you're setting up um, some kind of kill squad or suicide hero thing on this side. And then the hogs, the miners, the Laloon, uh, the Electro Dragons, whatever it is, is going to be coming at this part of the base. So as a base builder, you're thinking, okay, how can I you know, put Dead Zone here to mess up pathing for Miners and Electro Dragons as they kind of cut here? Um, putting the Tesla Farm here, the Seeking Air Mines, the uh, Storages. Basically looking at this base where, how can I make it as difficult as possible for the, um, the damage part of the attack to come through this this uh, lane of the base and yeah. when you identify that you can put all those anti laloon uh electro dragon hog minor aspects of the base over there knowing that the, the attacker can't come with the kill squad over here for the most part because they can't ignore these parts of the base and um it's too hard to deal with it with um the the, the back end part of the attack would you guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Uh, well, um, that all being said, we've taken quite a bit of time here, but some very valuable information uh, that I hope the viewers can get from this. Now we're going to switch gears and take a look at some replays on this base that kind of show these things in action for us. Okay guys, so here are some of the replays on this base. We'll just talk through um, as we go here. This first one was a La Luna attack. You can see using the suicide battle blimp. That's a popular thing at Town Hall 12. This actually exposes a flaw in the base where it lured all three of those traps right there too. I was pretty disappointed. Yeah, it, sometimes it's hard to see these battle blimp angles until they start running it in the attacks here. But I'd say this was a decent plan, you know, it, it, it got a pretty good uh, part of the base taken out. 
and he did go right into what we wanted. We wanted the Sui Queen over here because there's no value. I didn't expect him to get that air defense, but he got it. And then he even puts the king for the Tesla farm, which was really smart as well. Yeah, but you'll See? notice the king doesn't get that much because the giant bomb kills his barbs. That was a good feature. Yeah. And even with all the value he got there, uh, when he puts his balloons in here, you'll see between the multi-target and all those defenses and the queen hopping around from compartment to compartment, it makes it really hard to skelly her. And what I'm talking about here is um, it looks like it's easy value to send a handful of balloons in up there to get those air defenses, but it's really not that easy. Yeah, you got the multi, you got the sweeper pushing. Um, unless those balloons are under a haste or a rage, they do not get through that compartment easily. Something yeah, else that and they, had as, as a flaw is that you can see with the queen jumping. When you use the warden's tome, you need to be careful about when you're dropping Skelly because at some point she's just going to keep following. It doesn't matter if it goes across the whole base. She will right. follow. Yep. Mm -hmm. You have to be careful with the Skelly. Wait till she's in like an established location. Um, so that was a failed attack. Um, Town Hall didn't even go down, which would have uh, taken quite a bit to, to get that to go down. So this next one here, we're looking at the Electro Dragon, and this is just what we talked about, the exact same plan almost with the, uh, the use of the heroes. Yeah, and this is really what this base is baiting. You know, you, I really wanted them to come up here because there's just not enough value for the heroes when you come in this direction. It looks like a ton of value, but it's just not. And you'll notice his queen's going to pull that hound out, I think, when she goes up to target that wizard tower. Right. Should have used the wizard for that air defense. <laughs> <laughs> so right here, she steps into the range of that hound. And now the hound is out. And that's a nightmare right there. For electro dragons, because it's, unless you have like an archer, but I, I guess he already used it, that hound's just going to sit there and have to be destroyed and then the Electro Dragons are going to have to individually take out the Puffs. Yeah. Yep. And according to Supercell, Electro Dragons prioritize uh, Clan Castle troops like that. And so here I'm talking about, even with the Warden here, you know that because I got a good split on those E-Drags twice, see how they split at the bottom that second time too? Mm -hmm. It really thinned out the herd of Electro Dragons. So now the value of those Electro Dragons is so small that the push is going to be really hard to get through this base. And the Queen is just picking off E-Drags left and right. Yeah, the Queen's definitely a good player to have in there. Um, the E-Drags, you know, they rely on bouncing um, off one building to the other. They don't shoot that fast. So if you can thin them out, uh, they're not going to be very effective. Right, and even though he gets a lot of value here at the 6 o'clock, look at what he's facing. He's got the Town Hall, two air defenses. The King is actually a really good defense, too, because if he gets stuck on the King and he's just wandering them around, it takes forever to take him down. Right, so I think so far what we're seeing is people trying to bite off a little bit of the base um, on that top area we talked about where there's air defenses, stuff that can't be ignored, but um, they're, they're not able to get a comprehensive kill squad to actually take out that entire town hall area, making it even tougher on the already difficult bottom right that's very anti-anything, uh, really. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was a really efficient lure he had there, too. But again, he puts the heroes exactly where we want them. So we know, looking at this in the beginning, it's going to be high success rate for us, very low success rate for him. And he puts his balloons, I mean, probably 60% of them on the town hall side, knowing he has to take the town hall. This is their last shot to even two-star the base. So you can tell he's not going for three stars. Look at what he has down here. Just not enough balloons to take out the majority of the base at the bottom. Right. And he does have the warden's ability for the town hall, um, but just the numbers of balloons are just... They're not, the pathing's not great, and like you said, he has to be very cautious to get the two-star, considering that this was their last attack of the war. Yeah, this was their last hope. So anyway, um, we'll, we're going to switch gears one last time and take a look um, at a few Town Hall 10 attacks on 
this space and talk about defending Town Hall 10s as well, uh, the two-star at Town Hall 12. Okay, so um, Town Hall 10, two-star, not as important to defend against maybe, but still worth uh, defending against. We have a few attacks that are uh, good examples of what people will try to do. Pegasus will let you uh, kind of talk through here how this base is defending the two-star. So knowing that the only way they're going to get to 50% on a base of this configuration, they're going to have to queen walk. So queen walk in the top is not going to be enough value. So I know they have to queen walk either the 3 o'clock or the 6 o'clock side. Now, this base does leave a lot of free buildings, but here he goes at the 6 o'clock side. And this funnel right here makes it really tough to get the queen to go up to the town hall. I want her to come down six and then back up to three. And there's really not a lot of value in those buildings that they're targeting on that side. Plus I have two black Sams and a red bomb over there and he eats all those. And then comes down here, he's gonna lure out the town hall. That's part of the reason for having that gap is so that the, the hound will come out and aggro to the queen. Mm -hmm. Now, th this guy's going to come in with a kill squad at the town hall. He has to make a town hall dive, and he has to invest a lot to get there because he's fighting up two weight classes. So I got the king down there. Uh, he's got his king, five bowlers, a golem, handful of wizards, and I believe the CC is full of Valks. So here he aggro's the first uh, set of uh, skeleton traps, or the first skeleton trap. Queen's banging on the hound. He did freeze the eagle, which probably a good idea now right then he aggroed the second uh set of uh skeletons and the valks were already gone so now it's just his king and he just can't it's too much it overwhelms him yeah that combination of the town hall and the skeleton traps very difficult uh for town hall 12s but especially for town hall 10 to get the town hall that way if the valks didn't have to retarget they may have allowed the king to get the town hall in the end, but because they had to retarget for that second skeleton trap, there was just no hope. Yeah, so we'll, we'll switch. Having, Go ahead. Uh, having black sams on the outside of the base makes it hard to clean up with baby drags. Right, that has the dual purpose, like you said, uh, for mm -hmm. the electro drags at town hall 12, but also queen, queen walks and uh, baby dragons, so that's a good good thing to have. Uh, this next one here yeah. was, I believe, somewhat of a similar army composition. We'll see how it played out here. Yeah. So he pretty much picks off the same free percent because every percent matters. Now, he set his queen a little bit lower and activated one of the black sams of the balloon, and he got the funnel much uh, cleaner at the six, which is going to lead him into the town hall. So here they go, they're making their dive, but with the combination of the Valks, or the skeletons, and everybody in there, now he's aggroed the hound. He did put a skeleton strap, a uh, skeleton spell under that hound, which I thought was really unique. I haven't seen that before. I don't know if he was trying to keep the hound away from the queen, but lucky for me it didn't work. And the healers left the queen to the king and get picked off by the air defenses. And like I said before, there's just not enough value at the top to get that 50 percent yeah so it holds up again here um dub would you add anything to defending the two-star town hall 12 what's it what was interesting about this base is if we pointed out everybody has to come in at the town hall side and if you don't have a true plan for the rest of the base at some point you have to count buildings and i don't know off the top of my head how many buildings are at town hall 11 or 12 but at some point you have to account for the rest of these buildings and you can see as the second, was this the second hit on it, Pegasus? Yeah. So with the second hit on it, you can you could see that he had to try to make some sort of adjustment as far as the way the queen walked, but he removed some baby dragons to hopefully try to get a little bit farther. But at some point it, it turned out to be terrible for him because while he gets to town hall, you have, he, he lost the rest of his troops to be able to push through to get that percentage. And so while we don't build to stop Town Hall 10s, there are things that you can do to make it very difficult for them. Exactly. Similar to what Pegasus did by putting one side that's light and making it less valued. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if there's anything that the viewers can take away from this video, it's, it's been a long one, but um, we've noticed keeping the town hall separate is very powerful, away from the queen, away from the eagle, um, because the town hall is such a valuable building, but it can get destroyed pretty easily if it just falls to the a bunch of boulders under rage with the warden's tome, then it it can just go down easily. So keep that town hall separate at all costs. Anything else you guys want to add before we wrap up here? Um, I just want to say that remember defense is about two things, deception and counters. So everything you do, they're going to try to counter everything that they reveal in your base through a scout. And the more deception you have, like take this part of the base, it's free when it's really not, the better off you're going to defend. Uh, the only thing is probably just a little bit more of what Pekas has said. I mean, the whole goal is to bait something. You want them to believe this is the absolute only way that I can hit this base and this is going to be so overpowered. And, and when they feel that way, you'll see it. More people tend to lean towards, okay, I can definitely handle this. And every failed attack puts you that much closer to winning because they can't beat you if they can't triple you. Yeah, I think that's very uh, good advice there. Um, thank you guys both for, for taking the time. We've, you know, we've put a lot of time into this video. I hope the viewers enjoy it and uh, can get something from it. So as I said at the beginning, be sure to check out uh, Lando Gaming, Pegasus's channel. Um, it's going to uh, give you a lot more in-depth guides for base building attacks uh, with a highlight on Town Hall 12. Um, also, if you're interested, my Patreon is linked in the description if you want your own custom war bases each month. That all being said, I will see you guys uh, when we come up with the Town Hall 11 uh, base building guide, and then we'll go down to Town Hall 10, Town Hall 9 even. So uh, if you're not at Town Hall 12, don't worry. I, I'm not sure why you've watched this long, but don't worry. <laughs> um, the, the base building video is coming out for you as well. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you, Dub and Pegasus. I'll see you guys later. Bisect the Tron out.